Welcome to the Salmon Trout Steelheader podcast. Thank you for listening. This article is called Killing Them Softly, Fighting Big Steelhead. It is from February, March 2021. Recording and article in the latest issue of Salmon Trout Steelheader magazine. If you're already subscribed, this and others will no doubt be in your mailbox at your doorstep. Um, but I'm going to read this for the podcast. This is an article called Killing Them Softly, of course, hearkening back to the song. Fighting Big Steelhead is what this article is ultimately about. So, there is a difference between a hot six-pound steelhead and a brutal 17-pound buck. That much should be obvious, but it really becomes evident when you're 10 feet above a giant rapid and that massive line burner you just hooked turns toward it. Then what do you do? Some big fish will get ever so close and then decide to turn around and stay in the hole you're in. Others have every intention of heading down that rapid and saying goodbye to the elevation they just gained. At that point, you'd better make a power move. Either way, you'd better be prepared for that. So let's talk big steelhead. One of the things that I've come to find is that a big steelhead actually controls the conversation. A smaller, hot steelhead will burn line and give an amazing fight. I mean, you can get some incredible fights out of these uh, fresh steelhead, especially fresh chromers. Um, but the minute that you can actually turn its head over, you can usually gain some ground on it. And uh, with a big or even a giant steelhead, all that takes is, is laying into the current and it becomes ultra hard to make any headway on that fish. The sheer mass, the giant tail, the violent head shakes... That's the stuff that'll keep you up at night. And all it's got to do is turn and lean into the current. That current will take it with. But, you know, if it gives one kick of the tail, you can feel that tail. There is a feeling in the rod when you hook one of those steelhead that goes beyond anything you've encountered before. I was lucky, nay blessed, in 2013 to hook the only 20 plus pound steelhead I've ever landed. And it was just a matter of right place, right time, and right bait. And I was with really good friends who taught me a ton about steelhead fishing um, in Oregon. I happened into a trophy Oregon buck. Um, that It was actually only 36 inches long, but it was 22 inches in girth, which was just incredible. It, it, it was a, it was a, a true football. And if, if you would have seen the silhouette or an outline, you'd think Chinook for sure. And this one was late March, Northern coast of Oregon steelhead and hunkered down in a deep riffle faster than walking speed. The fixed float dunked my friend and steelhead mentor Marlin yelled at me to hurry up and land that fish, you know, hurry up, come on. It's a small fish, get it in. But this one really was different. My 8 to 12 pound graphite rod wasn't making much of a move on the fish. And contrary to the popular steelhead lore, this buck had no problem jumping. And it was blasting out of the water doing cartwheels across the steelhead green surface multiple times. After a good hard tug of war, normally, you know, you could finally make that pull and get that fish into shore by making the right move on the angle of the fish. But the above average current and massive girth of this fish made it nearly impossible to get any leverage to bring it to shore. Of course, the deep riffle directly up against a rocky bank I was standing on was less than ideal for a proper landing of the fish. All it had to do was turn into the current and I'm losing ground again. So in a miracle of 10 pound monofilament and a surreptitiously tied double uni knot, the steel had finally reached shore. I tried to grip the tail, barely getting the tips of my fingers around one side of it. And the fish turned and swam off. Another two minutes of pulling. Once again, hand on the tail, and once again it leaned into the current and got loose. Finally, I corralled the fish in my hands. By this time, my buddy finally realized how massive this fish was, and looked at me. I don't think you realize how big this fish is, he said. Hauled out the measuring tape, and we taped it twice just to be sure. As he went for his camera, the fish did one simple twist, and it was just free of my grasp. Really nothing you can do about it. That fish is just big, and it's stronger than you, essentially. Um, uh, 
As I grabbed my rod and started reeling, I realized the jig hook was free of the steelhead mouth, but the buck was ready to head back up river to seek a proper mate and took off just like that. I'm thankful to have the measurements, really, the memory and, and, and a little bit of video of the occasion. It was awesome. It was the first time I'd really seen the sheer force of a giant steelhead. And although that was the largest steelhead I've ever caught, it wasn't necessarily the hardest fighting. I get that same feeling any time I get a fish, you know, over 16, really 15, 14. I don't know. Steelhead are amazing sometimes. They can fight and just really utilize their, their size well. Um, upper teens fish, they can really be absolutely terrifying when they realize they're hooked. I've had the pleasure of hooking a few of them, you know, and each one of them has left me feeling fairly inadequate. Sometimes it's a yank and for a split second I curse the snag I've just hooked. Then a familiar yet exhilarating head shake begins and it's off to the races. But instead of recounting past catches, let's talk tactics. A big steelhead has a unique ability to make the decisions in a battle. So when we as anglers think steelhead gear, it's usually matched up to a normal steelhead. Now most anglers know to upsize their options when big steelhead are in, but what does that exactly entail? So I go this way. Rod-wise, I try to go slightly heavier than your average steelhead rod, where my main hatchery steelhead, average steelhead setups are 6 to 10 or 8 to 12. I'd maybe run 8 to 15, 10 to 17, or even 10 to 20 pound rods uh, when big steelhead are around. But with that said, rod ratings are not a perfect science. I'm just saying that kind of more in the medium heavy range, you really got to, you know, just kind of keep an eye out for the designations and, and what it's supposed to be used for. And with that said, sometimes I do use a longer, slightly lighter rod, but not by much. But if, if, if you're going with a longer rod, it'll absorb more of the fight for steelhead. Anyway, rod ratings, um, like I said, 8 to 15, 10 to 17, 10 to 15, 10 to 20, 12 to 20, all that good stuff. Um, anything with a decent backbound, uh, backbone without an L-shaped bend will do the trick. And what I mean by that is it should really be kind of more of a continuous, kind of like the outline of the moon as opposed to um, an L essentially, which I have, I have seen on some rods. So just be, be careful with the rod. Um, continuous bend throughout the rod will keep distributing power as the fish yanks. And any sort of immediate cutoff in the rod and you will lose the power you need. And also risk breaking a leader. And realize I have to admit I'm a bit of a cheap date as long as it's got a halfway decent drag. Um, but obviously, if you're talking trophy fish, you don't you don't want to skimp um, where where you don't need to. So just be wise in the decision you make. Don't get something that's not gonna work. Um, but you can get quality reels for you know reasonable prices as well. So. Getting down to the line, braid is kind of the standard of float fishing, spinner fishing, drift fishing, and it's a go-to 90% of the time. Any strong braid that you prefer will do. Your braid should not break before your leader does, and if it does, it's time to search elsewhere. Go with a strong braid that suits your casting and technique, and you'll be okay. There are other places to find that information. I won't get into it. Let's get down to the leader I used to hear. I go with 10-pound mono in most conditions, and then we go down to 8 or 6-pound test um, fluoro in low clear water or mono you know whatever it would be it's you know why even go to fluorocarbon then if you've got to drop your brake strength i don't necessarily think you need to make that sacrifice what you can do you've, you're already changing to a less visible leader so you can keep the same brake strength or even increase it in the case of steelhead often increase it as long as it doesn't have a massive diameter it should be fairly invisible now, if you've got a super light spongy rod, by all means, go to an 8 or 10 pound leader. But if you're like me and you want a, a fairly capable rod to match a big steel head, forget about that light of leader and go for a quality fluorocarbon in a 12 to 15 pound test. And honestly, depending, if you've got certain water that's big and fast and canyony, you might want to go with 20, 17, something like that. Um, but it, it's not all about the pound test. The diameter of the line is very important. So sometimes with the higher quality fluorocarbons that have lower diameter or a smaller diameter, you can step up pound test big time. 
Um, P line has a couple different types of uh, fluorocarbons and kind of levels of it. Um, all of them will work well anywhere for steelhead, I think in kind of that 12 to 20 pound range. Um, some of them can be pretty killer up right at that 17 pound range for spoon fishing and float fishing with jigs and such. Anyway, um, leader wise, it's just got to be capable, match the rod. And you've got to think about the fact that if you've got a giant steelhead on, you don't want to be sitting there worried about the leader. So if there's big fish in the river, go heavier than you normally would. Um, as my good buddy Gavin used to say, I don't fish for line shy fish. <laughs> anyway, um, a fresh fish that's just entering the river is not likely to be very line shy. If they've been fished over like crazy, you can go lighter. Um, each fluorocarbon has its own quirk, so get to know the line, tie some knots, try to break them, see how much saliva they require or how little. Once you've got confidence in that leader, I wouldn't go below 10 pound for big steelhead. In fact, I often stick with 15 or even 17 pound fluoro. So far, I've described a fairly heavy setup for steelhead. Medium heavy rod, strong braid, 15 pound leader. Yeah, go hard. But what about when it comes to fighting that steelhead? This is where I subscribe to a slightly strange philosophy, um, which is basically to go soft with them. With that said, do not think for one second I'm talking about lengthening the fight, and that's not the point of this at all. But basically, these fish are so powerful that you've got to kind of let them let them have a moment to think they're the boss, essentially. <laughs> so, of course, that hook set needs to drive the hook home with power. Make sure your drag is set to hammer the point, the point of that hook home and ensure a proper sting. Once you've got the fish, though, it's time to ease up. The funny thing about big fish is they react to the pressure they're feeling. I have a friend on the coast of Oregon who um, only uses giant hooks and heavy rods for Chinook salmon. He hammers his hook sets as hard as possible. He does this to get the most violent fight out of those fish. He misses a lot of fish on the hook set, but when he hooks up, they stay pinned. I like that idea for the hook set, but once they're hooked, I go with a much more gentle approach. I almost always lighten my drag slightly after hooking a steelhead. From there, I allow them to run when necessary and give ginger pulls to move them towards the bank. Using my other hand though, I will grip the line against the rod just above the reel, for both casting and spinning reels, to apply additional pressure when necessary. Tightening the drag itself during a fight is pretty much a bad idea. If a fish decides to run with major power, I want them to be able to do so without breaking the leader. So I give them a fairly light drag, kind of if, if they were to turn and run full speed on you, I don't want them to have a possibility of breaking the line unless I apply more pressure to it. So, and then also, um, they're just not going to feel it as much if you're not yanking on them as hard the whole time, except for when it counts. So when it counts is when they falter. Then hold that line against the rod, make a good pull on them, lift and reel, lift and reel, go for it, move them towards you. Use those moments especially. Get, you know, get as much pressure in to get them closer. And then if they decide to take off again, go soft. And uh, there have been times um, where we've got big fish to the net without them even knowing they're hooked only to have them go absolutely crazy in the net. Sometimes those big fish, they don't even, they're not even really reacting yet. So I'm definitely not advocating unnecessarily tiring out fish, not at all. I do not believe that using force selectively and fighting a fish lightly will result in a longer fight. Sometimes it can reduce the fight time because the fish is not stressing and going nuts the entire time. Make big moves when it matters, let them run when they can, and then steadily bring them back. Using that hand on the line is a variable drag. Of course, if we're only going for maximum fight, then give them a major hook set, tighten that drag, and put the wood to them. But if you're looking to land that fish, I believe it's good to go with a lighter drag and use the hand rod technique to get fish in successfully. I know some absolutely incredible anglers who can get fish to bite like no other, but boy, oh boy, do they lose fish. <laughs> the one thing in common, they go with... 
ultra tight drags. There's nothing wrong with that. It's super fun. You know, it's the love of the fight, the brutal, brutal force of a tight drag with a hot fish. Maybe it's worth it. But if you're like me and you want every bite to count, every fish to be subdued for the most part, you'll go for the lighter drag, you know, when, when necessary. So just kind of a article that I wrote, um, you know, if you agree or disagree, comment on the podcast and, and let us know. But uh, something that I wrote uh, in February, March of Salmon Trout Steelheader 2021, a bunch of great articles in here. Take a look. You can get it on SalmonTroutSteelheader.com, the single issue as well as order the magazine itself. And uh, there's some excellent deals going with the magazine right now. Thank you guys so much for listening.